one of the coolest things about GarageBand is that you can start a song here on your Mac and then transfer it over to your iPhone or iPad to continue working on your project. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can do that, taking it from the studio to the road and back again. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. Welcome to Studio Live today. So what we're going to do here is export this project as an iOS project and then bring it into my phone. I'm then going to take you with me on the road as I make some changes to the project as I'm out and about. We'll then come back in part three and bring it back into GarageBand on Mac. There's timestamps in the description so you can follow along there. The first thing we need to do is grab my project here up the top here in GarageBand. We're going to actually share this. So we're going to click the share button and we need to export it project to GarageBand for iOS. So we're going to click on this one because you need it to be in an iOS format. Now, I've already done this once before, so it says, do you want to share this again? Yeah, I want to make sure I share a fresh version. So we're going to click the share button there. Now we can actually save it as a GarageBand iOS file. Now, the place that I recommend saving it is here on your iCloud drive. I've got a GarageBand for iOS folder here in my iCloud drive. So what I'm going to do is actually pop it in here. I'm going to call it that same name there, but I'm just going to put iOS after it just so that I know that this is the iOS version. We're going to click on save and it's going to go through and export. It's going to bounce down this GarageBand Mac project and then once it's finished doing all of this we'll be able to head out on the road, grab our iPhone and continue working on this project in GarageBand iOS. So that's now finished. What I'll do is while I'm here in the studio, I'll jump onto my iPhone and I'll show you how we can actually bring this project into GarageBand iOS and what it looks like over there. So I've loaded up GarageBand here on my iPhone and what we'll do is we'll go to the browse option here. Now where we saved it was here on my, on my iCloud drive and then here under GarageBand for iOS. And there you can see it's there. What we've got to do is download it first to bring it on in here. So we're going to tap on there. It's going to start downloading from iCloud Drive and once it's ready to go, that didn't take long, we'll hit OK there because I'm just using AirPlay here to display this and here it is. Now, what you're probably noticing there is that it's all in one particular file here. It's all in just one track here and it's just going to be one stereo track that we're going to add to because a lot of the things in GarageBand Mac are not compatible with your iPhone or your iPad, but don't worry, everything that we add here, so if I came in here and started playing around with ideas and adding new tracks, we can then then bring them back into our project when we get back to the studio. What we can't do is remove things or remix things or change things that are already in there. So what we're going to be able to do is capture some ideas while we're out and about, but then it will bring all of those individual tracks back into our master project on the Mac. So that's the way you've got to think about it, that this is like our device to go out and capture some ideas and do some additional recordings and add some instruments. And then when we get back to the studio, we'll be able to bring them back in. So uh, let's uh, get some sunscreen on, throw on the hat and get out and about. So I often get asked, why are you a mobile creator, Pete? Well, uh, when you've got a day like this and you can be outside but also creating music at the same time, I think you know the answer to that. So we're out and about, we're about to load up GarageBand and start adding some tracks and some ideas to this project. So it's as simple as loading up GarageBand just as we did back in the studio and adding some stuff in. So I'm gonna go away and do that and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. All right, so we are back indoors and uh, as you can see yeah it's a bit of a dog's breakfast of various ideas and things that we've put in here but that's okay because that's just every time that I was out and about and I had an idea I recorded it so we got a couple of audio recorder tracks we got some strings we got some pianos we got some drum loops we got some I don't even know what that is let's jump back over to the studio and find out exactly what we got so we're back in the studio. Here is my iPhone. There's all those tracks that I just showed you. Now, what we need to do is make sure that we save out. So we're just going to close, go back to my songs in the top left there. That's going to save this out. And we're going to make sure that that actually uploads. So we'll wait for that cloud icon to disappear because that means it will have sent all of these updates back to iCloud. Then we're going to jump over here onto the Mac and take a look at what we've got. All right, that cloud icon has gone away, meaning it's now uploaded. Let's now load up GarageBand here on the Mac and reopen this project and see what's happened. So I've opened GarageBand, it's reopened this project and check this out. New tracks have been added to this project by GarageBand iOS. Do you want to import the new tracks? I sure do, GarageBand. So let's hit the import button and this is going to go away and bring in those tracks into our GarageBand project. 
There we go. Import successful. Changes were imported successfully. Share to GarageBand for iOS again to edit this project further. So this is what I was talking about before. The GarageBand Mac project now becomes our hub. And then if every time we share it out, we can add to it and then bring it back in here to Mac. So some additional content is required. Sure, we're going to download it. Seems to be asking me that every time. So we'll download this additional content and then we'll be back and show you what we've got here. Now, as you know, when we saw this project in GarageBand iOS, it was just a stereo track. But here's the cool thing. Here's all the original tracks. And if we keep scrolling on down here, look what's happened. All of these new tracks that we added while we were out and about here are now added here into GarageBand as individual tracks. So we can come in here and we can use these. We can play around with the strings, the piano, and they've all been converted here into their GarageBand Mac equivalents, including adding in all of these instruments. So this is why it's so cool that in the latest version of GarageBand, you've got all the same sound packs, all the same samples. We can now use all of these different instruments. So let's dive in now and see what we've got because I'm a little concerned about what we added while we were out walking about. Now, everything here looks pretty good except for this drummer track. I had a drummer here in GarageBand iOS and when it's come across here to Mac, it seems to have converted it to a regular MIDI track. So uh, this one's not playing and I don't really know why. It may be that Duncan is the one drummer that doesn't get supported over here in GarageBand Mac. I don't know. So we may have to redo our drums here. But all the rest of them here, we added some vocals. We added some strings. We added some piano ideas here. We added some drum loops and some music box. So why don't we just go down to a section where we have all of these and uh, see what we got while we were out and about. <music> Now, I told you this was going to be super experimental. So what have we done here? Let's take it one by one. So I've added in, whoop, we've clicked the wrong button there. I told you I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to this. So I did one take here where I've got a bunch of ideas here with the vocals. So just some basic ideas of some harmonies here. We then added a second vocal here. So this was me just playing around with these. Let's take a listen to these together. Better run, you better take love and the thing is, sometimes when I'm out doing this sort of thing, I just start saying different things like that's going to convert itself to a synth sound or a bass sound or something else. Don't be afraid to just hit record. And even when you're going to embarrass yourself when you're out in public and you're doing things like this. Can you hear, can you hear the thunder? Better run, you better take cover. When you bring it back in to your overall mix, it's eventually going to sound okay. Uh. Now, the one thing that I thought was cool is that this one needed a four on the floor kind of beat. So I actually found one of the four on the floor drum kits here. And this might be something that we can use throughout this track as a bit of a loop here. Let's take a listen to this one by itself. So this one here combined with our original drummer could give us a bit of a cool kind of groove here. Yeah, bring our bass in. Yeah, nice, right? Now, these strings that I was working on here, let's take a listen to what's going on with these ones because I actually tried the autoplay on iOS. So if you've not played around with GarageBand iOS and used the autoplay, it doesn't always work, but it's worth a shot and you can then edit the autoplay. So you'll probably see me edit this later in this particular series. So if we come in here and we're going to solo that cinematic strings, let's take a listen at what I tried to do with these strings here. We'll come down a little bit. Let's take a listen. I'm not hating that. That could end up in there as a bit of something different. You know what? You just got to experiment with this stuff. Let's continue on here. I added this music box. I don't really remember what I was doing with this. Uh, let's just uh, add this one in here. So it's taking me a while to find the notes that I needed there, but it was like a ding, ding, ding.
again, more experimentation. We'll, we'll play with this more uh, further down the track. What about the piano? What was I trying to do here? I think I was playing with some arpeggios. Uh, let's see what sort of arpeggiated sounds we had down here. Yes, we definitely want some of those cool arpeggiated pianos. So all of this together here, <laughs> when we get it all, this is what I was working on while I was out and about. Sans Duncan, because we don't quite know what happened to Duncan there, but we'll we'll fix Duncan in a future video. Uh, but let's just take a listen to all of these weird ideas together here and see what they sound like. Bring our vocals back in, shall we? I said, do you speak of my language? So does it sound like a disorganized mess right now? Yeah, kind of. But can you see the power of this that just grab your phone and in an hour or so just walking around, every time I had an idea, I threw it in here. Some of these will land in the garbage heap. Some of these will end up in the final track. But it just means that whenever you get that inspiration, you've got your project with you wherever you go. And remember, we can have our base here in GarageBand on Mac. We can add stuff. So I'll continue to do this in future videos. In fact, hang around because we'll be doing more on this project in the coming days. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.